is that often people that commit crimes will commit another if they're released. Her stark statements were no surprise to the I team. They will just spread all over. With gunshot wounds, all three taken to the hospital. We have a crew on the scene and we'll bring you updates as soon as we learn more. In the meantime, a new curfew set to has not said what led to the shooting. The victim is currently in stable condition. And a Fox 5 News block of Metropolitan Parkway outside of a Chevron gas station at around 2 a.m. After hearing multiple gunshots, officers found three wounded people at the food mart. A homicide detective described the shooting as an argument that escalated to gunfire. Upon their arrival, they found uh, three different uh, gunshot victims. They were all transported to Grady Hospital. Subsequently, the female succumbed from her injuries. It's an argument that escalated to gunfire, so we're still working through the details of that. Investigators say they are interviewing witnesses and reviewing video to learn more about what happened. Tonight, 34-year-old Quintarius Beck shot Adrian Rush just before 3 a.m. at their home on Parkbrook Drive. Beck faces several charges, including murder and cruelty to children. Investigators want anyone with information to give them a call. The vandalism, but one rabbi tells Fox 5's Rob DiRienzo he thinks much more needs to be done. <laughs> The hateful message was discovered on a bathroom wall inside Pope High School. It was discovered in the middle of the Holy Jewish Holidays and just days before Yom Kippur. And we will not stop until we get answers from the administration. A demand to know who was behind the message, Hail Hitler, written in big letters in one of the boys' bathrooms at Pope High School. Below it, two swastikas that we've chosen to blur. The image is now circulating on social media. Rabbi Larry Cernovitz said a parent who belongs to his congregation told him about it, and that's when he stepped in. We were able to go into the end of each of the lunches and to be able to have conversations with the students. In a statement, a spokesperson for the school district said in part, anytime students misbehave and in this case disrespect individual students, people groups, and their school, we find it unacceptable. But Rabbi Cernovitz said that's just not enough. It, the statement lacked any specific, specificity, which was the challenge in the whole thing. This was an anti-Semitic hate crime. And what they failed to put in that note to the community was exactly that. The incident comes nearly exactly in the area. Rabbi Cernovitz thinks it's part of a larger problem within the county. And we said then and we say now that this is no place for hate. This is not who we are in Cobb County. But I, I got to tell you that within the last 24, 48 hours, the number of texts, phone calls, and emails that I've received from others who have experienced very similar things here in Cobb schools was pervasive. He says the Jewish students he's hearing from that attend Pope High School are on edge after this incident. We know that words and actions go hand in hand. They're scared that something might happen here. And that's the challenge for us right now. Rabbi Cernovitz tells me that he hopes one positive thing to come out of this whole situation is a stronger... Perry spoke with the victim about those terrifying moments. Both police and the victim tell me they want the man responsible off the street because they believe he could strike again. Her pounding video as the man is robbed at gunpoint while inside their own home. I just knew I was going to die. This man, grateful to be alive, doesn't want to show his face, but wants to share his story. I drove down Peachtree. He was walking down Peachtree. He flagged me down. I pulled over. I thought I knew him. But when I realized I didn't, we got into conversation. It happened last weekend. The man says he was dressed as a woman at the time. Once they got back to his home nearby, they eventually went inside for a drink, and that's when things turned dangerous. He came out the bathroom, put the gun in my... Let me see your hands! Hands up! Glass breaking, guns drawn, deputies raiding a Palm Coast home to find all this. Investigators say it's two pounds of fentanyl, a powerful and potentially deadly opioid, and deputies say this much could kill 481,000 people. Clearly when you have a kilo of fentanyl, uh, that's not your typical street level uh, you know, dealer. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley says he's looking into whether the drugs could be tied to a recent fentanyl bust in Marion County. On it was stamped uh, from a cartel in Mexico. And I can tell you that the color and the consistency, although ours was not still in its block form, 
uh, looked identical uh, to me. Sheriff Steely says the drugs are being tested to see if there's a link. Well, it would indicate to me that the cartel certainly has operatives, uh, you know, in Florida and Central Florida. All that is still under investigation, but two people have been arrested. <laughs> Deputies say Brian Paraglia and Michael Connolly live at this home on Blasdell Court, which now says no trespassing. Neighbors tell us this place has been causing problems for years. People in our neighborhood are complain about it. I hope they can find somebody to take over the house and fix it back up again. Is that often people that commit crimes will commit another if they're released. Her stark statements were no surprise to the I team. They will just spread all over the floor. Back in February of this year, we toured the Fulton County DA's office with then newly elected Fawny Willis. She inherited over 12,000 unindicted criminal cases from her predecessor, Paul Howard. The I-Team reported how Howard left office under the cloud of a criminal federal investigation into his use of a nonprofit to pad his salary with almost $200,000 in City of Atlanta funds. Not Howard has denied any wrongdoing. 4,000 cases were left over from Howard's time in office. 7,